for Ottawa's Open Internet Town Hall. I'm Steve Anderson from SaveOurNet.ca. Um, before we get going, I'd first like to thank um, Telecommunities Canada, CIPIC, uh, Nubchi, the Tai, Rabble.ca, and the CCPA for helping us uh, pull this together. Um, and I'm really happy to have uh, Ruta Mole um, to facilitate this discussion. Um, she's the director of Telecommunicated. Telecommunities Canada, a research associate with CCPA, has been a public interest advocate on telecom issues for 15 years. Um, she was co-organizer of Canada's first public interest advocacy, advocacy group on internet issues. It was called Public Information Highway Advisory. Um, so we definitely have um, someone with a bit of um, historical understanding here. To the left. Um, so, uh, it was a response to the industry-led advisory group appointed by Industry Minister John Manley at the time. Um, they prepared an extensive intervention to the CRTC convergence hearing, uh, which was signed by 150 Canadians, uh, uh, mostly through the internet, which at the time was uh, pretty notable. Um, so it's great to have uh, Merida here helping us out. Um, this is the second in a series of town hall meetings. The next will happen in Vancouver on June 20th. Um, and um, these town hall events are bringing together uh, web innovators, entrepreneurs, civil society leaders, cultural workers, and citizens to discuss the future of the internet in Canada. Um, the, the audio of this discussion um, will be podcasted by rabble.ca. And um, we also have someone videotaping it. So I just want to make everyone aware of that. Um, and you can go to rabble.ca afterwards uh, to get the podcast, and um, we'll post uh, videos later on savernet.ca. Um, for, for those who end up watching this online, if the download seems a little shaky at times, well, um, that's, <laughs> that's, um, that's either because Canada's internet hasn't kept up to speed with the web technologies that are available, or because um, telecom companies uh, that deliver the internet to us are slowing down the feed for some reason, mm -hmm. or possibly both. Um, it, it's, it's kind of an ironic situation that having a discussion on the future of the internet is being stifled by the current infrastructural problems we face. Um, the sad fact is that we don't, we don't actually know if companies are slowing down the technology that people will use to watch this video, and um, that's one of the problems, or is one of the problems that we hope to address tonight. And um, I'm just going to take a quick second to define a couple of the terms here. Um, I'm sure that a lot of people here are quite familiar, but from my experience with the last um, town hall we had, there's a pretty big diversity in terms of people's level of understanding. Some people are completely understand this and probably are involved in ways that I don't even want to know. And then, uh, <laughs> and, and other people, and other people, it's, it's uh, at, at the Toronto event, it was their first time, and they just heard that there was a discussion about um, the future of the internet, so they really didn't know too much about it. Um, so I'll just um, basically mention, I'll talk about what net neutrality is for a second. Um, basically it's a rule that stipulates that all content and applications on the internet are treated equally. Um, that means that us, the users of the internet, decide which content and services um, uh, we, we get to access on the internet, not internet service providers. Um, so it, it's, it's a little bit like, um, it's a little bit like electricity. Um, electricity is a neutral network. If you plug in a toaster, it just works. Um, the, the hydro company doesn't come in and tell you which toasters can work and which don't. It's the same thing for, the same principle is kind of regulated the way the internet works as well as um, if you're uh, a, a couple of guys in a garage, you want to start up, say, Google, you don't need to ask permission. And you, you're not going to be, you're not going to have to pay someone off to innovate. It's just works. Um, so, so that's the basic um, issue of net neutrality. Um, the other thing is um, is kind of our infrastructure in Canada. And I don't know how many people know this or not, but we Canada was kind of an early leader in, in, in internet, um, in internet uh, access and speed. And um, now we're falling behind um, many countries um, in terms of access, speed, and cost. And, and that has implications for our economy, it has implications for civil society, it has implications for free speech, it has implications for um, 
uh, consumer choice. Um, so I think that right now, considering the, you know, the political and economic crisis we have, um, it's a really good time to have this discussion. Um, we also are lucky to have Charlie Angus with us, who just introduced a bill on, on some of these very issues. Um, and uh, also, um, the CRTC uh, chair, chairman, uh, uh, Conrad Van Finkelstein, just recently called for uh, a national digital strategy in Canada. Um, and, and so I think this is it's, it's really an exciting time, and I think that we need to make sure that if there is a actually, we first need to make sure that there is a strategy, and we also need to make sure that that strategy includes a broadband plan that benefits all Canadians. Because as Canadians search for ways out of, um, to emerge from the, our recession, if, if we want to be stronger, more productive, more just and innovative, I think we all know that we need an internet that works for everyone. We need a faster, more accessible internet. Um, so with that, I'll hand it off to Marita and the, the rest of the panelists in the room. Thanks for coming. And it's wonderful to see so many people here tonight. Fifteen years ago when the internet first came on stream, there was a huge amount of activity. Yes, it was 15 years in the end. <laughs> it was a huge amount of activity around the internet, a lot of public excitement, and people really felt that they had a voice then, and they could make a difference when they, when they got involved in the discussion. I remember going to the first CRTC convergence hearings. All kinds of people, just general public, were there, which was not normal for the CRTC. They were astonished. Things have kind of calmed down over the years, but once again, I think that we're seeing a time when people are starting to come out to these kinds of meetings. People are starting to feel that there are issues at stake in which they need to have a voice, and I think that's why you're here. I thank you for being here. Uh, my job as moderator is going to be to try to focus the discussion. Uh, we'll, this will be kind of the, the way we'll roll out. We'll have the panelists, uh, five to ten minutes each, for, to, be, to start us out. Uh, and we have three wonderful panelists. And uh, then we'll have open questions for a little while. I will, around 8 o'clock, try to get you to focus the issues and focus the questions. Uh, very important, I, I, I did want to make sure that everybody here did have a copy of the one pager down here. The question, there are questions on there that we really ought to try to address. But most important, the very last question on that page which is, um, which is what we're going to do, what we're going to do now. So uh, it's important that we come out of meetings like this with some idea of where we're going to go. As you know, this is a rolling set of meetings across the country. Uh, I think that it can certainly pick up momentum. We've uh, got some media here tonight. We had some media today with um, Michael Geist on.